Herr Lehrer, how do I know if a two-way preposition uses accusative or dative? Simple. If the prepositional phrase indicates motion, you use accusative. If not, use dative. So, for example, ich bin auf den Gehweg gelaufen means I walked on the sidewalk. The verb laufen is a motion verb, as you taught us, which means there is motion in the sentence. So we use the accusative case. Right, Herr Lehrer? No, you mean to say ich bin auf dem Gehweg gelaufen. But the perfect uses sein when there is motion, so I use sein. And the accusative case is used with the two-way prepositions when there is motion, so I used accusative. What you said is that you walked from the street or somewhere else onto the sidewalk. Okay, but schwimmen is motion, so I say ich bin in das Schwimmbecken geschwommen. No, ich bin im Schwimmbecken geschwommen. Okay, this is really confusing. Maybe the problem is the motion verb. Let's try this with a non-motion verb. Ich habe mich an dem Tisch gesetzt. No motion in the verb, so we used haben, and therefore no motion in the prepositional phrase, so we use dative. No, you use the accusative because there's motion. So why don't we use sein in the perfect? That's just the way German works. No, it isn't! Last week I told you that your German teacher taught you the perfect tense incorrectly, or at the very least inaccurately. Now I'm going to fix another problem that your German teacher caused. If the perfect tense is used with sein when there is motion, and two-way prepositions or Wechselpräpositionen are accusative when there is motion, why do you almost always use the accusative case with Wechselpräpositionen when you use haben as your helping verb in the perfect? There are times when the present perfect tense is used with the form of sein, which according to your German teacher means that there is motion, but the two-way preposition in that same sentence uses the dative case because there's no motion. Huh? What? Get ready because I am going to blow your mind. The first problem was cleared up last week. The rule is not motion versus non-motion, but rather transitive versus intransitive. The problem this week is similar. It's not about motion, it's about change of location or lack thereof. Let's take a look at the following examples. Ich bin auf der Autobahn gefahren. I drove on the Autobahn, or interstate, or highway. Versus, ich bin auf die Autobahn gefahren. I drove onto the Autobahn, interstate, or highway. In the first sentence, we were driving, which is an intransitive verb because we don't have a direct object so we use sein. But we're not changing location throughout this sentence. I am on the Autobahn at the beginning, and in the end of the sentence, I'm still on the Autobahn. In the second sentence, we use the verb sein because there's still no direct object, but the action of the sentence moves me from not being on the Autobahn to being on the Autobahn. This change of location forces me to use the accusative case. So the question we must ask ourselves is not necessarily directly related to the verb. Our question is whether or not the location described within the prepositional phrase is indicating a change in location or a constant location. Ask not if your verb is motion or non-motion, but if your preposition is expressing a change in location. Ich schwimme in dem Schwimmbecken or Ich schwimme im Schwimmbecken. I am swimming in the swimming pool. In this sentence, the location of the action does not change. If you were to write this sentence with the accusative case, it would mean that you can swim on land and you are swimming into the pool, which is ridiculous unless you're Chuck Norris. Now let's take a look at the commonly used verbs that your teacher probably told you require the use of the accusative or dative case, as the case may be. Pun intended. Your teacher likely gave you examples like this. Ich habe mich auf den Stuhl gesetzt. I sat myself down on the chair. Ich habe auf dem Stuhl gesessen. I sat on the chair. In the first one, I was not sitting, but now I am. The change is indicated in the prepositional phrase with the accusative case. The second sentence shows you that I am already sitting in that position, 
which means I did not change location, so we use the dative case to indicate that the location does not change throughout the sentence. Er hat das Buch in das Regal gestellt. He put the book on the bookshelf. Das Buch hat im Regal gestanden. The book stood on the shelf. Wir haben die Blätter auf den Tisch gelegt. We laid the papers onto the table. Die Blätter haben auf dem Tisch gelegen. The papers lay on the table. Fun fact of the day, the difference between lay and lie and legen and liegen are the exact same difference in English as it is in German. Lay is a transitive verb which requires a direct object. It's the same as legen. Lie is an intransitive verb which will not use a direct object. It's the same as liegen. Aha! I caught you. If intransitive verbs require sein in the perfect and liegen is an intransitive verb as you just said, why doesn't liegen take sein in the perfect? No, no, don't answer that. I know already. It's a non-motion verb, which is why it really needs haben. I was right. <laughs> nice try, but no. In Northern Germany, where most people consider proper German to come from, they do use haben with liegen. But in Southern Germany, Austria and Switzerland, they use sein. The reason textbooks and other resource materials use haben is because of this assumption that Northern Germans speak more correctly than their Southern counterparts. And also this infestation of the idea that motion versus non-motion is the deciding factor for helping verbs. Long story short, both are correct. Back to the two-way prepositions. You probably understand the general idea of how to use these by now, but let's make things more interesting. Ich habe das Blatt Papier auf den Tisch in dem Wohnzimmer gelegt. I laid the piece of paper onto the table in the living room. In this sentence, we use both the accusative and dative cases with different two-way prepositions. The first one indicates a change of location for the piece of paper, which means that we need the accusative case. But the second one is referring to the location of the table, which is not changing, so we use the dative case. Ich bin mit meinem Hund in meinem Auto nach Chicago gefahren. I drove to Chicago with my dog in my car. Neither the dog nor I are leaving or entering the car during this sentence, which is why we use the dative case with in meinem Auto. The fact that the car is traveling to Chicago is not relevant for the location indicated in the prepositional phrase in meinem Auto. Das Flugzeug ist über die Wolke geflogen. The airplane flew over the cloud. Das Flugzeug ist über der Wolke geflogen. The airplane flew over the cloud. Huh? I like sentences like this because it shows you how precise the German language can be. In the first one, the airplane was at some point not over the cloud. Whether this means it started out over the cloud and ended up not over it, or some other variation thereof, it's not really clear. In the second sentence, the airplane never leaves the position of being over the cloud. Mein Bruder ist in den Bergen gewandert. My brother hiked in the mountains. Mein Bruder ist in die Berge gewandert. My brother hiked into the mountains. In the first one, we use the dative case because there is no change of location. Throughout the entire sentence, my brother is in the mountains. In the second one, he started out not in the mountains and ended in the mountains, which is a change of location, which requires the accusative case. Ich setze mich auf dem Tisch hin, da mein Stuhl schon auf dem Tisch ist. I set myself down on the table because my chair is already on the table. In this sentence, I purposefully confused you. The verb hinsetzen is usually used with two-way prepositions using the accusative case, but that's because the act of setting oneself down is a change of position from not sitting to sitting. In this sentence, however, the entire action of setting oneself down happens on top of the table as the chair onto which the person is setting themselves is already on the table. Of course, this is an extreme example of how to use the distinction between accusative and dative case, but it might help you to see things like this. So the next time you're trying to figure out if a Wechselpräposition uses accusative or dative, ask yourself if you are trying to express a change in location with that preposition or not. If you are, use accusative. If not, use dative. 
Yeah, that's what I said. Accusative with motion, dative without. Yeah, but not clearly enough that your students could understand what you were trying to say. Do you want to learn more about the two-way prepositions? Click that link. Do you want a random video chosen just for you? Click that link. If you want worksheets, video scripts, and more, click the link in the description and join me on Patreon. Das ist alles für heute. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!